السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس ویلکم ٹو دا کورس پرنسپل ان اینیمل لائف ون دس از لیکچر نمبر ففٹی سکس ان دس لیکچر وی ویل ڈسکس تھری سیل اسٹرکچرز دیٹ از گولجی آپریٹرس لائسوسومس اینڈ ویکیولس ڈسکسنگ ایجنڈا فار دا ٹاپک ویل بی گولجی آپریٹرس its structure and various functions lysosomes vacuoles uh, and then we will summarize the endomembrane system we have already discussed that to a certain extent in our previous lecture lecture outcome after watching and listening this lecture students will know about the golgi apparatus lysosomes vacuoles and endomembrane system first we discuss the golgi apparatus which are also known as the golgi bodies in plants they are known as dictyosomes uh, and these are one of the few organic structures in biology which are named after their discoverer so these structures were for the first time studied by a scientist named Camilo Golgi in 1898 uh, and uh, they are named after him as Golgi bodies uh, what is the function of golgi bodies uh, they are the shipping and receiving centers uh, they receive vesicles from the endoplasmic reticulum and then then these vesicles are modified they are given final touches they are packaged uh, and then they are shipped uh, to other destinations uh, so therefore the golgi apparatus is also known as the post office of the cell now after uh, the uh, vesicles leave the endoplasmic reticulum they find their way to the golgi apparatus we can think of golgi as a warehouse for receiving sorting shipping and even some manufacturing so all these processes takes place within the golgi bodies here products of the endoplasmic reticulum such as proteins are modified and stored and then sent to other destinations not surprisingly golgi apparatus is especially extensive in cells uh, which are secretory in nature so the golgi apparatus consists of a group of associated flattened membranous sacs called cisterni looking like a stack of pita bread pita bread is usually referred to the uh, roti and uh, just like the uh, plates uh, which are staked one upon each other uh, similarly these membrane sacs uh, of golgi apparatus are, are also staked one upon each other here you can see these uh, membrane sacs stacked one upon each other and uh, the golgi apparatus has two distinct uh, sides uh, the side facing towards the endoplasmic reticulum is called the cis side uh, and the side on the opposite direction or the one facing towards the cell membrane is called the transside uh, so as the vesicles are received here on the cis side uh, then each of these compartments are supplied with their characteristic kinds of enzymes uh, and as these uh, 
vesicles they pass from the cis side to the trans side uh, they are modified uh, and in this uh, journey the vesicle matures and eventually leaves the golgi apparatus through the trans side and either uh, move towards the cell membrane or towards other destinations within the cell a cell may have many even hundreds of these stacks uh, the membrane of each cisterna is a stake separates its eternal space from the cytosol so these cellular organelles are basically compartments within compartments cell as a whole is a compartment uh, and then as you move into the cell you find the uh, membrane bound organelles uh, and these membranes they provide a characteristic environment and conditions uh, to these organelles to uh, efficiently carry out the functions they are supposed to so vesicles concentrated in the vicinity of the golgi apparatus are engaged in the transfer of material between parts of the golgi and other structures A Golgi stake has a distinct structural directionality. The cis side is the one facing towards the endoplasmic reticulum and the trans side is the opposite side or the side facing towards the cell membrane. So the transport vesicles move material from the endoplasmic reticulum and uh, these vesicles fuse to the cis side of the Golgi apparatus and then the material and the vesicles they move through various uh, cisterni and finally they are budded off at the trans side. So during this uh, journey from the cis side to the trans side, uh, the vesicle matures. Uh, products of the endoplasmic reticulum are usually modified during their transit from the cis side towards the trans side. Uh, for example, glycoproteins formed in the endoplasmic reticulum have their carbohydrates modified first in the ER itself and then as they pass through the Golgi, some of the monomers of these carbohydrates are replaced with other types of uh, molecules in the Golgi apparatus and uh, the vesicles are also tagged there just like uh, the postcodes so the vesicles are provided with the postcodes uh, which helps these vesicles find their destination membrane phospholipids may also be altered in the Golgi apparatus. In addition to its finishing work, uh, the Golgi apparatus also manufactures some macromolecules. Uh, some of the polysaccharides uh, that are secreted by cells are usually produced uh, by Golgi apparatus. For example, pectines and certain other non-cellular polysaccharides, they are produced by Golgi apparatus. 
like secretory proteins, non-protein Golgi products that will be secreted depart from the trans phase of the Golgi inside transport vesicles that eventually fuse with the plasma membrane. So when the endoplasmic reticulum releases a transport vesicle, this transport vesicle is surrounded with some of the membrane from the endoplasmic reticulum and when this vesicle fuses with the Golgi apparatus, it also uh, adds uh, the surrounding membrane to the Golgi apparatus and when the Golgi apparatus releases our transport vesicle after final furnishing, after packaging and this transport vesicle fuses with the plasma membrane. So the membrane surrounding this vesicle which was provided by the Golgi apparatus is also added to the cell membrane. So and uh, you can uh, imagine that uh, Golgi apparatus neither lost any membrane neither gained and uh, the plasma membrane gained uh, some part of the membrane and uh, the endoplasmic reticulum lost some part of the membrane but because endoplasmic reticulum both the smooth and the rough endoplasmic reticulum has the ability to synthesize membranes uh, so therefore there, there will be no effect uh, there uh, but in this way uh, it will uh, help in adding of uh, membranes to these structures. Uh. The contents are released and the vesicle membrane is incorporated into the plasma membrane adding to the surface area. So let me explain it once more because a picture is worth a thousand words. So let's suppose this is endoplasmic reticulum. Now the endoplasmic reticulum will release vesicles, transport vesicles which will be surrounded by a membrane and this membrane is budded off from the endoplasmic reticulum. Now this vesicle will move towards the Golgi bodies. And this vesicle will fuse uh, with the Golgi bodies. Uh, the membrane surrounding this uh, vesicle will be become part of the membrane of the Golgi apparatus. And uh, when this vesicle matures, uh, then it will leave uh, from the trans side. Uh, and it will be budded off from the trans side so it will take back some of the membrane along with itself uh, and when it reaches the cell membrane then it will not only uh, provide the membrane uh, to the cell membrane but also the vesicle so overall the Golgi apparatus is receiving membrane from one side and then it is giving away the membrane on the other side and the plasma membrane is receiving not only the vesicles but the membranes from the trans side so its uh, uh, area of uh, the membrane is increasing in the plasma membrane there will be no effect although it is losing some part of its membranes but there will be no effect of endo on endoplasmic reticulum because it has the ability to synthesize membranes. I hope it helps.
Now, the Golgi manufactures and refines its products in stages with different systems containing unique teams of enzymes. We have already discussed that the cisterni are staked one upon each other and there is a distinct directionality, the cis side and the trans side. So here they say that each of these sta uh, stakes uh, or cisterni is supplied with its own set of enzymes uh, and as the vesicle move from the cis side to the trans side, uh, it is uh, uh, acted upon by different teams of enzymes uh, and in this way it uh, attains its maturity. Here once again you have uh, a final look at the Golgi apparatus. This is the cis side uh, which is facing towards the endoplasmic reticulum. The trans phase side is facing towards the cell membrane, the vesicle emerging from endoplasmic reticulum fuses on the cis side and then it is acted upon by different sets of enzymes uh, in each stake and finally the mature vesicle emerges on this side. So now we discuss the molecular tags of course the Golgi apparatus is the shipping center so it needs to supply the vesicle with some kind of a tag and this tag will help the vesicle to find its destination easily. So that was all about the endoplasm, the Golgi apparatus. Now we start the lysosomes. Lysosomes are also known as the suicidal bags. Uh, they are the digestive compartments. Uh, they are filled with digestive juices or hydrolytic enzymes. Uh, remember one sentence here that lysosome is the structure which helps the cell continuously renew itself uh, because lysosomes degrade the old, the slogged off uh, organelles uh, and uh, as a result, the cell produces new, more efficient organelles. So it, it keeps the cell young. Lysosomes carry out intracellular digestion in a variety of circumstances. For example, amoeba engulf food material. This food material uh, enters into amoeba in the form of a food vacuole and then this food vacuole fuses with a lysosome forming a structure called phagolysosome where the food material is broken down by the enzymes present in the lysosome so this type of digestion is taking place within a cell so it is intracellular digestion Here you can see the food material is taken up in the form of a food vacuole and it then fuses with a lysosome and then the lysosome performs its function by breaking down the food particle into its simple form. Now the digestion products of course will be the monomers because the food material is present in bulk form. Remember this is uh, a bulk transport uh, or vesicular transport where large uh, molecules are taken up by cells uh, and uh, these molecules are uh, quite often uh, macromolecules uh, so the cells cannot use macromolecules they must first be uh, divided the polymers must first be divided into their monomers and then the cells or the organism as a whole can 
incorporate or use the monomers for their own sake. Now, uh, some human cells can also carry out phagocytosis and among them are the macrophages, the white blood cells uh, which defend the body against the invading pathogens uh, and their mechanism of action is uh, uh, engulfing of the bacteria and then destroying it. Lysosomes also use their hydrolytic enzymes to recycle the cell's own organic material. A process called autophagy has already mentioned that this organelle is responsible for continuously renewing the cell. The cell continuously renews itself courtesy of lysosomes. Lysosome degrade the old organelles, the slogged off organelles, which are not uh, no longer efficiently performing their functions. So lysosome degrade these organelles and then new, more efficient organelles are synthesized. So during the autophagy process, a damaged organelle or small amount of cytosol becomes surrounded by a double membrane of unknown origin and the lysosome fuses with this membrane. The lysosomal enzymes break down the inner membrane and the enclosed material and the resulting small organic compounds are released to the cytosol for reuse. Of course, when the hydrolytic enzymes degrade a polymer, then the monomers are released and becomes available for the cell to be reused somewhere else. So with the help of lysosome, the cell continuously renews itself uh, a liver cell for example, recycle half of its macromolecules each week. The cells of people with inherited lysosomal storage disease, uh, they are talking about the Tay-Sachs disease, uh, where uh, one of the enzymes uh, in the brain is not functioning normally so the enzymes inability to break down lipids results in the accumulation of the lipids and then this accumulation of the lipids in the brain it pressurizes the uh, adjacent structures and as a result the person suffers from different symptoms Now, lysosomal storage disorder is rare in general population. Another structure uh, to be discussed here is vacuoles. Vacuoles are large vesicles derived from endoplasmic reticulum and Golgi operators. So, the origin of vacuoles is from ER or Golgi operators. And vacuoles are an integral part of the endomembrane system. Like all cellular membranes, the vacuolar membrane is selective in transporting solutes. As a result, the solution inside a vacuole differs in composition from the cytosol. Once again, we have come across an example which says that the composition of different membranes surrounding different cell organelles is different from one another. For example, the composition of the plasma membrane or the cell membrane is different. Uh, cell membrane will allow a variety of 
molecules to enter into the cell and then there will be further selection amongst these molecules by the membrane surrounding the vacuole so as a result the composition of the solutes within a vacuole will be different from the uh, than that present in the cytosol so vacuole perform a variety of functions uh, in different kinds of cells they may be food vacuoles uh, contractile vacuoles which are responsible for pumping out uh, excess water and maintaining homeostasis they have a role in osmoregulation uh, in plants we have some vacuoles which store hydrolytic enzymes uh, Then in plants, some other types of vacuoles act as storage vacuoles and they store proteins, uh, poisonous materials uh, or unpalatable, unatable materials. Of course, this is for a, a defensive mechanism where the plant produces some chemicals which are pungent, which are poisonous and uh, because of those chemicals uh, the herbivores usually avoid feeding upon such plants and uh, vacuoles in plants also store pigments that is red and blue pigments which are present in the petals that helps in attracting insects uh, towards it Mature plant cells generally contain a large central vacuole and uh, this large central vacuole is as a result of the fusion of many smaller vacuoles. So here you have a plant uh, cell where a large vacuole is present and uh, because of this large vacuole the nucleus is pushed towards one side in animal cells usually the nucleus is in center or near the center so the solution inside the central vacuole is called cell sap and it is the plant's repository of inorganic ions including potassium and chloride so repository means a storage site where inorganic ions are stored now the large central vacuole plays a major role in growth of a plant cell so when a plant cell increases in size, increases in volume, so it is actually because of the increase in the size of the vacuole, central vacuole. The cytosol often occupies only a thin layer between the central vacuole and the plasma membrane. So the ratio of plasma membrane surface to cytosolic volume is sufficient even for a large plant cell. Now a review of the endomembrane system. Endomembrane system is of course a system of membranes uh, uh, which uh, a system of membranes uh, which comprises the plasma membrane and all other membranes which are surrounded uh, by various cellular organelles like endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi bodies, mitochondria, lysosomes, vacuoles, uh, nucleus so all those membranes along with the cell membrane forms the endomembrane system 
as the membrane moves from the endoplasmic reticulum to the Golgi and then elsewhere, molecular composition and metabolic functions are modified along with those of its contents. So, the nuclear envelope is connected to the endoplasmic reticulum the rough endoplasmic reticulum uh, which is also continuous with the smooth endoplasmic reticulum membranes and proteins are produced on rough and smooth endoplasmic reticulum then they travel in vesicles to the Golgi apparatus in the Golgi apparatus these uh, membranes are further modified uh, they are given final touches, they are packaged, uh, they are tagged uh, and uh, then they are uh, sent towards their destiny. The endomembrane system is a complex and dynamic player in the cell's compartmental organization. So the cell is divided into different compartments. It is because of the presence of those membranes. A membrane surrounding a particular organelle not only helps uh, the organelle to perform its function efficiently but it also provides a suitable environment where the organelle can function at its optimum levels. This is the end of the lecture. You can also refer to this book for further details. Uh, your uh, questions will be anticipated on KCMS and WhatsApp. Thank you. Allah Hafiz.